Hello, pet parents, and welcome to another episode of Natural Pets TV. I'm joined by Dr. Ken Tudor, Dr. Liz Bales, and Dr. Patrick Mahaney. This next topic that we're going to cover is something that everybody out there really needs to pay really close attention to because I know the stats are staggering. Dr. T, I want to talk about cat obesity. Kick us off. Uh, that's probably, in my mind, the leading disease in cats at this time. 58% of cats walk into veterinary hospitals for treatment of other diseases and walk out with the same disease that they walked in with being overweight and it wasn't even addressed. Um, and even more importantly to your cat is that we used to think fat was an insulating um, uh, covering of, of the muscles, if you will, and provided energy in times of, of less food. But what we found now is that fat is actually the largest endocrine, body in the gland, uh, endocrine gland in the body. And it secretes in dogs about, uh, and cats about 40 uh, hormones. In humans, it's well over 100. And most of those hormones are pro-inflammatory. What that means is a cat or dog or human is living in a state of fever 7, 24, 365. In other words, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the entire year. And it, we think it's that chronic inflammation that's driving the cancer rates, that's driving the kidney problem rates, that's driving the liver problems, that's driving so much of diseases that seem to have an inflammatory uh, component. And so we really need to address this. And I think a lot of it has to do not with what we're necessarily feeding cats, how we're feeding cats. And Dr. Bales really has an agenda with regards to this. I really do. So when, when we look at, at this issue, 58% of cats in America are obese. It's a staggering statistic. Mm -hmm. And sadly, the number is going up year after year. This isn't a steady state. Things are getting worse. And we are loving our cats to death with food. And if you look at the natural feeding behavior of cats, it's so very different than what we're doing in our homes. We talk so much about what we feed our cats, and it's an important conversation. But how we feed our cats is just as important. And the natural feeding behavior of cats is to eat multiple small meals throughout the day and night. The average calorie content of a, a cat in nature of each meal is about 35 calories. What that equates to if you're feeding dry kibble is about 10 to 13 pieces of kibble. That's a meal for a cat. And it should happen multiple times throughout the day and night. Certainly 13 pieces of kibble a day is not sufficient as an entire diet, but that is a meal. So what often happens is we have the bowl of food in the kitchen. Our cat will go over and take a bite or two and walk away. But human beings want our cat to have a whole meal because that's what we perceive as satisfying. And so when they walk away, we think, well, that's not tasty. They don't like it. I got to go get a better food, a different food. I need a different, a whole different regime. So we make things more and more palatable for the cat and we push our food on them more and more. So now they don't follow their own natural behavior of that small meal. They mm -hmm. overeat and we are the cause of their obesity. Add to that treats. The amount of treats that we can be giving can even surpass the calorie content of the required meal that we're giving. Uh, take it to another level. In nature, cats hunt for their food. They spend between six and eight hours a day in the active process of finding food. It's really the only exercise built into their life. When we feed them from a bowl, we completely deny them any real incentive to go exercise and look for their food. And so we have lethargy, we have overeating, and, and we're creating our own problem with obesity. It really is very distressing. I'm always shocked when I think about, too, the number one nutritional disease in pets, cats and dogs, is obesity. If you asked your typical pet owner that, they wouldn't think, oh, some like calcium deficiency or not enough protein or too much protein, but obesity. And it's a, it's a problem created by owners. It's a, it's a problem created by the pet food industry by creating the style of feeding that overindulges the pets. As a result, we've created this epidemic, which is probably affecting other countries as well, not just the US, especially as other countries start to model feeding behaviors off of what the US is doing too. It always concerns me, like instead of just feeding real moist, fresh, human grade foods like we would eat ourselves, we so rely on these processed foods that can stick in a bowl for or in a bag for weeks to months at a time and still be fresh. So I'm, uh, I'm very like, 
anti-conventional feeding styles. I'm very pro feeding foods like we eat ourselves. But um, in, in coming back to what Dr. Tudor said, I think it's so important to think about the inflammatory effects of disease of, of obesity and what it really does on whole body health. And especially with cats and developing diabetes, um, it's, it's a potentially irreversible disease that is incredibly expensive to treat. It's very time consuming for the owner. It kind of creates a chain link between you and your cat. You can't leave for too long. You have to always monitor what they're doing. You have to give them injections of insulin. So if you could make efforts every day to feed, kind of like what Dr. Bales describes, and feed smaller quantities more frequently, hopefully you can keep your cat slim on a lifelong basis and avoid them a lot of misery and avoid you a lot of expense. And cats actually want to work for their food. It's hardwired to enact their predatory instincts at mealtime. So just plopping down a plate, not only are you overfeeding their body, but you're starving their predatory instinct as well. And so it's a, it's a multifactorial problem. Right, it is. And, and as you, you mentioned, their small meal habits makes it difficult for cat owners to lead a normal life if they need to work because uh, you can't be home all the time offering these small meals. So there are a lot of alternatives out there with regards to um, regulating the amount of food a cat gets at a particular time. And I would encourage you, the cat owners to look into some of those alternatives and take their mind out of the food bowl, if you will, and think outside the box. And I think starting kittens yes. with a feeding life that is, I'm in the ban the bowl campaign, yeah. <laughs> that if we start kittens out with a more natural feeding uh, schedule, a more natural um, hunting for your food lifestyle, not only does it prevent obesity, but so many behavior problems as well from the anxiety of not having their environmental enrichment needs met. So uh, if you have an obese cat, I think a great thing to do is really assess is my cat obese? A and take your cat to the vet. Only 10% of cat owners recognize their cat as obese. We think it's cute, it's fluffy. We, there's even Facebook clubs about fat cats and it does seem adorable. The problem is we're killing them. We really are. We cannot, we cannot love our cats to death. It's not okay. So let's find out, is my cat obese or not? And if the f answer is yes, your cat's overweight, losing weight for a cat is very different than losing weight for a dog or a person. It really should be under medical guidance. If your cat loses weight too fast, they can become very sick, and you don't want to invest all this energy in trying to have them lose weight unsuccessfully. So doing it with your veterinarian and some guidance about how much, when, how to feed is a great idea. But that's the cat that already has the problem. It is a preventable problem. And if I was getting a kitten today, I would not start with a bowl full of food. Mm -hmm. Great idea. And so your veterinarian can actually calculate for you how many calories your cat should eat per day. And then looking at the foods, treats, collectively deciding what's the quantity that shouldn't be exceeded. And then you can figure out how to divide it into multiple small meals a day that are entertaining and engaging their body and their mind at the same time. So work with your veteran, ask your veterinarian to do his or her homework to actually give you that caloric number. And then you can read the package, read the can, and determine what's the appropriate quantity. And, and you bring up a really good point about quantity because I think it's so hard for us to scale. Right. You know, we are big people. We weigh more than 10 times the amount our cat weighs. And even a very very small overfeeding. In fact, for most cats, overfeeding just 10 pieces of kibble a day over a year equals a pound of weight gain. Wow. So it, to us, that's insignificant. I mean, I certainly eat that as a snack walking by whatever my kids <laughs> left on their plate in the kitchen. It seems not like it's nothing. But in fact, it really does add up and sure. it's very significant. So we have to think in terms of scale and ultimately mathematically is often the best way to deal with it. Absolutely. And I agree with Patrick and you completely, is we've got to get out of this idea of feeding quantities and feed calories. And uh, uh, the average 10 pound cat only needs about 300 to 350 calories per day. So start thinking in terms of calories for their cats rather than quantities for their cats. And let's get them moving. Yeah. Let's yes. get them moving. moving. Let's get them moving and engaged in the eating process. Well, as you can see, this is a very big problem. Thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV, the cat edition. If you want to keep the conversation going, we'd love to hear from you. You can do that in the comments section down below. And remember, you can always reach out to us at PetWorldInsider.com. To find out more information about our guests, you can find that about Dr. Ken Tudor at TheWellDogPlace.com, Dr. Liz Bales at NoBowlCat.com, and Dr. Patrick Mahaney at PatrickMahaney.com. 
Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a part of the process here at Natural Pets TV.